last week we uh, Mark Mark Saunders he talked about just uh, the difference between walking in the spirit and walking according to his carnal nature or the flesh or about the, my my desires what what I think what I want and he talked about the difference and he specifically focused on anger and that when he was his anger resulted in him being critical and and angry <laughs> um, whereas walking according to the spirit was God's love for for a person and the gospel would now God has called us, you and me, to a life of incredible fruitfulness. Way more than we can think about. And it's, and it's more than just the visible that you can see. But God has got eternal fruit and value in your life, which is far greater than you, can, than you and I can sort of imagine. But we can grow into it and, and, and grow, it, yeah, grow in it. God's presence in our lives and when we, we read about the Holy Spirit in Galatians 6 wherever it is in Galatians the, um, it contrasts the acts of the flesh but then the fruit of walking with the Spirit and the, the, the quality the quality of what your life can be about by the Holy Spirit but Mark talked about this one area thing that actually stifled the fruit in his life. No, it's a permanent thing. God convicted of it, it you know, using his daughter in particular, but God convicted him of it, and he was able to turn, turn around and change, it, change his ways in that particular area. It's called repentance. Recognizing the, what, what is something that isn't right in your life, turning to the Lord and doing the right thing. That's you know changing the way you think about things, and so and then good fruit comes from that, and just to, just to say that anger about things is not the only thing that choke chokes or stifles our spiritual walk. There are a bunch of things that can choke and stifle your spiritual walk and my spiritual walk and our ability to bear fruit Jesus talked about it quite clearly that there were things that could do, do you ever feel like do you know my, my Christian walk is a bit stifled at times there's sometimes the things that, that choke it and that are stopping it producing the fruit it should do well can we have a look at some of them this morning and then look at perhaps what we can do about it to uh, move, move on so shall we read this parable um, I'm going to read it from Matthew 13 but you could read it in Mark 4 and Luke 8 and in Matthew 13 it's Jesus telling a parable which is basically a story with a meaning isn't it um, Matthew 13 verse 3 then he told them many things in parables saying a farmer went out to sow his seed as he was scattering the seed some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow but when the sun came up the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred sixty or thirty times what was sown that's this fruitfulness that God wants to see in our lives that he's got us for he's called us for fruitfulness whoever has ears let them hear the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? This bit's important, by the way. He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them... 
It's fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. And here's a quote from the Old Testament. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, or hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For, I, for truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what, what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. So the parable is explained now. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown among the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Just some quick lessons from this. One, the kingdom of God in our lives is about fruitfulness. And none, all of us are called fruitfulness. That's what God wants in our lives. That is what God facilitates and manages to sort of to produce within our lives as we follow him it's amazing if you look if you're looking to the future and we were we were talking about the young people and i think yesterday and i was looking at a bunch of these young people if they follow the lord seeking to grow in his ways and not departing from the path they will achieve way, way greater things than they could ever have done if they don't follow the Lord. But it's the same for all of us, but I was talking about in the context of the youth. But the potential, and when it's from a place like Blackpool, where over Blackpool is spoken that young people will not achieve, that's the sort of, sort of spirit over the, the area, in Christ, set free to follow Jesus and wholeheartedly follow him, the path of fruitfulness is massive. But that's for all of us. Jesus said in John 15 that we've been called for fruitfulness. Abide in me, you've been called for fruitfulness. And that's an amazing thing. Your life and my life in Christ is not a waste, is not just at a, a small amount. It's a 30, 60, 100 fold potential of fruit in, within our lives. Um, and as you've walked along that path and you see that fruitfulness coming in your life, you think, wow, it's true. It is so true. The second thing, so one is it's about fruitfulness. Second thing, it's about your heart. This parable and these stories are about our hearts because it's when our hearts are open and wanting to hear, that's when we can be productive and fruitful. Um, in, in, that, in the middle of that passage, in verse, um, uh, going from a verse back, verse 11 or 10, 11, Jesus explains why he speaks in parable and is fulfilling a prophecy as well. Um, but it says, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You'll be ever seeing, but never perceiving. perceiving. And the reason being, for this people's heart has become calloused. Like when you've got a blister or you know, a hard patch and the heart become harder. 
And so they hardly hear with their ears, and they've closed their eyes. But then it says, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts. And when you and I submit our hearts to the Lord and say, your will be done, your kingdom come, not mine. Would you create in me a clean heart? Would you refresh my heart? If I'm hard, Lord, my heart is, becomes hardened. Would, would you soften my heart? You know, the, the whole, the whole um, new covenant is based around God taking away our hard hearts and giving us a heart of flesh and putting his spirit within us and his law within our hearts so that we don't actually, it's not like an external law that we've, oh, we've got to do this, got to do that, but it's a, God moves our hearts to, to walk in his way. And so a key thing, are you willing to, to soften your heart and submit your heart to God and say, let your kingdom come? Let your will be done. That's the heart of it all. Thing is, there, there are things that battle with that. And, we have, and that's where our flesh, our carnal nature, rises up and says, actually, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, so in, in, you know, and, and this is what we're going to talk about this morning, a, a little bit. This, when we've softened our heart and we're able to do that, there is a constant battle with the flesh as well, saying, actually, no. <laughs> We're not going that way. Um, it's about your heart. And in Proverbs 4, it says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So it's all about your and my heart. Matthew 5, verse 8, do you want to see God? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So it, it, it comes down to that, doesn't it? So one, it's about fruitfulness. Two, it's about our hearts. And let's just look at the, um, the weed. It's, it's possible to um, give your life to Jesus. Um, I mean, the parable about the stone on the path and it just gets snatched away straight away. I know that I've been, when I was a child, I went to Christian meeting, a, a Christian holiday camp. They preached the gospel every single day. And I have absolutely no recollection of anything to do with the Word of God connected to it. I, I just know I won a poetry competition for reading out the porter <laughs> or reciting the porter. So if I were a porter, pushing loads of trucks and stuff. So that's all I remember about it because the seed was snatched straight away. And I know all this because I subsequently, after I became a Christian, I volunteered at that holiday club. And I knew exactly what went on. I'm guessing people prayed for me, you know, but the word just got snatched away. It's very easy as well. The second thing, I'm not going to cover this, about, about the, um, responding quickly and with joy. And then when it gets difficult, giving up. Don't be in that category, okay? If you're sort of like that, you know, just do what you can to... Because Jesus didn't tell us this parable but saying you're a hopeless case. You've got no chance of changing your heart. You can do if you submit it to him. So you say, oh, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a shallow Christian. That's my heart. That's my lot. No, no, that's not why Jesus told this parable. We can do something about it as we submit our lives to him and we invest in the things that matter. And I think we do need to invest in them. But I want to talk about the weeds choking us. And the weeds are like the, you know, talking about the flesh and the spirit, the carnal nature and the spirit. The weeds are like that. They um, relate to worldly desires and concerns. I, I think this is, have you got a slide there with, with, with them on? So what I've um, come up with are a combination of the things that are mentioned. So it's, this is mentioned in, what did I say, uh, Matthew 6, Luke, no, Matthew 13, Luke, what, what are the verses that, uh, the, the par where the parables are? Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8. So I, I've... I've taken these things from 
the different translations, the different parts. So, first thing, um, the worries of this life. Who knows that worry is quite a strong emotion that's going on in your life? When it happens, when you start worrying, it's difficult to think about anything else. And that stifles us. And then we start making our decisions based around the worry. You're trying to sort the worry out, trying to uh, um, hide from the worry. Or, or you know, sometimes it's like that, isn't it? You just sort of, I just want to put it to one side and forget the, the thing I'm worrying about. Just, just bury it. And, but this strong thing about worry, who's ever worried here? Be honest. I'd be surprised if anybody, right, who's telling the truth that they haven't worried? <laughs> they said they never worried. <laughs> Everyone's worried. And, and do you know what? That's why the Bible constantly tells us don't worry, because God knows that we worry. Okay, so, but worry is one of these things that stifle, choke the ability to walk according to the Spirit. Um, And God says, don't worry. It will stifle our walk with 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 the Spirit. It will stifle our fruitfulness if we stick with worry. If you're worried today, this is absolutely not condemnatory because we all worry, but we have to do something about it because it stifles God's plans in our life. It chokes, it chokes that growth, the fruitfulness. In Matthew 6, verse 31, it says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink? There's, there's money worries here, isn't there? Um, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Whatever you're worrying about, your heavenly Father knows. But I want to carry on worrying. <laughs> And it's not as simple as saying, I'm not going to worry anymore, because it keeps coming back at you, doesn't it? <laughs> it keeps coming back at you, that this, this worry is, is, is in there. And it, and it, and it, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. I'm going to have to move on. I can't. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Put Jesus first. Follow his ways, his word. We're going to look at the word and how that bear fruit, bears fruit in our lives later on. But I, I want to put these things, things up and we're going to submit them to God. But okay, so the worries of this life, the things that, a lot of them are about things you can see, some of them are about relationships, what's going to happen. You know, you worry about your job, what happens if I lose my job? Well, God is our provider. He will provide a way. What about if this bill comes and I can't pay it? God will provide a way. What if this person gets angry at me? I think (laughs) Mandy was talking about fear. But what about if this person gets angry at me? God will provide provide a way he will do there might be things that we need to do and and we do need to act according to his word and follow his word and his ways but God will sort it out God always works for the good of those who are called according to his purpose he works all things out for for the good of them So worry is one of them. The deceitfulness of wealth. And Jesus talks about this. And seeking after, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy, but saying, when I've got enough money, that's when I can be fruitful. 
We can devote ourselves to getting money and we, it stops us from being fruitful. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working hard, being paid well, uh, you know, and, and all of that. But if our goal, if we, if we think that money is going to solve our problems, we're wrong. Jesus says that. And it's, it's a, and, we, and we can, and I've met plenty of people who, who, who their life is geared around getting money. We won't be fruitful. If we gear our lives around getting money, we will not be fruitful. And it's deceitful. In Matthew 6, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And you've got the rich young ruler for instance, come up to him. And he, he wanted to be fruitful. He wanted to know what he could do to please God and serve God. And God said, oh, well, yeah, your heart's in the right place, but the only thing that... You, how about you give your money away? <laughs> and then uh, suddenly we get... He got caught out. And in that, Jesus exposed what was really going on in his heart. Money is a massive one for us. And I, I, I have to say this, that... Um, would you be willing to give all your money away if God asked you to give all your money away? It's interesting, actually. I know that I would be. Well, I know that I was many years ago. Perhaps I got more now. I'd be less to uh, less liable to do. But I know that I've had times in my life when I have given all my money away. And I know that tithing is a fantastic way of stopping um, money being your God. Tithes and offerings are a fantastic way of stopping money being your God. But it will stifle your growth if, 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 it's, always, if, it's, if it's a battle for you to tithe, actually. Um, if you struggle tithing and you say, well, sometimes I will, sometimes I won't, but it's a big... If, there's something wrong there. That will stifle your growth. That will stifle your fruitfulness. It will choke your fruitfulness. Another one is desire for other things. There's so many things I was saying, oh, I'd be, you know, I'd love to do this. I'd love to do that. I want to travel the world. Uh, um, and you, you may well do, which, uh, yeah, and you may well travel the world. It's fine. Yeah, I, I want to, oh, I want to have sex outside marriage. I want to take drugs. There's a, there's a pull for all sorts of things in this world. And this talks about a desire for other things. And there's, there's all sorts of pulls on our life. And if we follow that pull on our lives, the desire for other things other than God's kingdom, if we can't, you know, at times you think, do you know, yeah, I know I really want to go to this um, prayer meeting, or I really want to go to church, oh, but England are playing football. <laughs> or oh, do you know I just oh, uh, yeah I want to go and have a game of balls <sighs> doing the right thing playing a game of balls <sighs> you know and, and, and there's a pull of desire and then to, but the, every time we give in it's choking what, the, the, the ability to bear fruit In Psalm 37, it says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And that's a wonderful thing. Is one is, if you've got real desires that God has given you, God will fulfill that in your life if you delight in him. The other thing is, the other way of looking at that verse, and it's just as valid, is that delight yourself in the Lord, and he will change the things that you want. I, I think about... Um, when uh, you know Mandy was talking about going and doing dangerous things but I actually think that um, that Paul um, he wanted to do what he was doing more than anything else in the world even though he knew it was going to be difficult he, he desired to do that more than anything else in the world 
And I know when I went to Cambodia as a missionary, I wanted to do that more than anything else in the world. He'd put that desire in my heart. And when God puts his desires in our hearts, that brings fruitfulness. It really does. And the last one was life's worries, riches and, and pleasures. And in, um, I read this passage, Matthew 16. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be? be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul for the son of man is coming is going to come in his father's glory with his angels and then he will reward each person according to what they've done denying ourselves following jesus picking up our cross and following jesus that is a way and the part of that is crucifying our flesh saying it's not what I want but it's what you want and that's where the fruitfulness comes listen to the next part next week <laughs> it's, it's good because that's the bit about the fruitfulness but just to say getting rid of those weeds in your life and my life not letting them take charge because that's the truth of it they don't have to take charge of your life worry does not have to take charge of your, your life the desire for money does not have to take charge of your life I know I've broken my word I've gone over by three minutes already and um, the, the last thing and desire for pleasures it isn't my, my hand or my mind made me do it it's actually we can choose to follow the Lord okay. shall we just pray and then uh, we haven't finished the service right? but then we're going to stop recording um, at this point Father I pray take this word help us to take it a heart I pray where people are bound up by worry and anxiety Lord that you will break through and you'll help them to, to see a new way of living and that, that, that weed will not bind I will not choke. The desire for wealth, I pray, Lord, you'd help us to prioritize and um, make you our Lord, not money. And Jesus, the, 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 the pull for other things. Lord, we help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord. So, Lord, I, I want to say thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen.